Tell us about Annapurna Summit Day, Base Camp Summit Day. <gasps> Good morning. It is five something a.m. Travis and I are up early. Uh, we're trying to get some cool time lapse videos. So I'm gonna use the little DJI Action 4, and Travis is gonna use the good camera, and we'll see what we can get. It, we were trying to decide which way we were gonna point the cameras, and there's like 37 epic options, so. Hopefully at least one of the ones we choose is epic. I don't know if it worked out. Here it is. Starting day, what day is this y'all? Four? Day four. Apparently this is supposed to be significantly easier than the last two days, but do you believe it, Ash? Uh, somewhat. <laughs> Up we go. <laughs> Nobody believes it. Well, we'll let you know. It's starting with stairs as far as we can see, so. Before, but this is Kuchar, my porter, and not only is he carrying my normal stuff, he also is carrying a lot of camera gear. So he, uh, uh, his English is limited, so he has no idea <laughs> how much I appreciate him. Um, it's a game changer to have these porters, especially when we're trying to bring tons of stuff up uh, to shoot what you're watching right now. So. And I'm from the Philippines and we never had this sweater back then. I'm jealous because I'm the one like freezing in the corner while everybody's sweating. It's not fair. are rolling in but we're making good uh, making good time and we can see our lunch spot it's not super close but it's not super far away and they're probably lying but we've been told it's significantly easier after that so today has definitely been easier than yesterday but I still had quite a few quite a few stairs and some gnarly climbs this is how fast the clouds roll in. 
it was clear 45 seconds ago and now it's not. Even just in the time I started this video, I could clearly see our lunch stop up there. Got there, <laughs> you couldn't see anything. <laughs> it was very, very foggy, very windy, very cold. Big rocks and like these gorgeous waving grasses, um, streams flowing. Um, don't drink the water, even though it looks really delicious. It was just, I mean, very, very stunning, beautiful. I love a gray day. I live in the Pacific Northwest, so I'm like, uh, I get like really romantic about like the mist and the gray and not seeing anything. I like want to write songs. I want to write poems. I'm not good at these things, but it makes me want to write them. As we were hiking up to ABC, every single step <laughs> had less and less oxygen available. And our, our guides, our porters are saying, slowly, slowly. <laughs> and they kept, they were so sweet and they would say sir or ma'am after our names. Um, and I got told, Sarah Mem, slowly, <laughs> so many times. Sarah Mem, away from the edge, <laughs> a lot. They saved my life, that's really what happened. The slow pace probably saved me from having the worst headache of my life, <laughs> probably saved me from literally getting altitude sickness, but it felt, oh my God, just wanted to get there, just wanted to be there. Like it was kind of cold, like I prefer hiking in shorts. I don't like pants when I hike. I was wearing pants, it was cold. We had a sliver, a very small sliver of blue sky. So we're celebrating. It's very cold and it's starting to rain, but I am going to resist complaining because I'm very grateful that it's not raining until now because I think we're close-ish. Their group separated. We were all hiking at different paces. So some were very, very far ahead, some were middle and behind. Porter stayed with everybody to make sure we were safe and we had someone to guide us uh, in case anything happened. Because it was so foggy, certain distances, we couldn't see the people behind and when our group emerged out of the mist it was like the reunion of a lifetime to say oh, they made it they're here we did it we're there oh my goodness it was uh, uh, for the longest time i was the last and i was strolling along um having to stop probably every 20 feet ish like yeah, because I was really struggling with the altitude change. And the porter was amazing. He just really was so patient with me. And when I made it to the base camp, I just, uh, it was very emotional for me because it was really a dream come true. <laughs> How do you feel? I feel fantastic. There were a couple of times I didn't think I would be able to do it, but... <laughs> 
um, amazing and uh, unbelievable that I've been able to do this. <laughs> no. To consider where I was three years ago and to be here now, it's... Yeah. <laughs> There are words. I was 260 pounds and having a hard time walking up a flight of stairs and just completely changed my life around and now I get to do all the things I wanted to do when I was younger but couldn't physically. So to have made it this far is unbelievable. <laughs> I feel amazing, accomplished, I feel happy and no oxygen <laughs> but I can do it that's the thing like it's mental it's not physical the body can take it it's more mental than anything else so I'm so happy with myself because I feel like I can do anything if I put my mind into it. This has been an incredible journey. The people, the experience, the porters, the mountains. So good, amazing. I'm so happy we made it. Uh, this one was really hard, but every single view was worth it. it like every second of it was worth it. I, I love it. Congratulations, Ashley. You just made it to Annapurna Base Camp. Congrats, Mike. Pretty freaking cool. Yeah. I heard the statistic that statistically, based on the size of our group, not everyone was expected to make it to the top. I never doubted. Everyone made it. Everyone. We got to the top and you cannot help but just cry at the emotions of all of it, the joy, the, we did it, tears. I'm Alexi Kissel, I'm from Denver, Colorado. And then you look around and there's people from all over the world experiencing the exact same emotion and it's this like universal language of, I just did it and I can't believe it. I went over to give a high five to someone from a completely different group, didn't speak English, and she just, started crying and pulled me in for a hug and it was, I don't know, it was very special. We get to the top, we see the sign that's like, you've made it, Annapurna Base Camp, mm, many, many meters high, and we can feel it. And then we start, <laughs> I love to celebrate. So we start celebrating, I'm howling at the sky, I'm like, Ooh! Ooh! Then we have a dance party, of course, because we're a team disco trick. And we start to, I can't breathe at all because we're dancing, I'm cheering, I'm yelling. And Height. We are yes. safely arrived on the Puna Base Camp, which is the 4,100 meter. We all made it! Yes. So especially Kiki Man, yeah. uh, Krista Man, all the men. <laughs> <laughs> especially, yeah, I feel very proud and very glad. We think we've made it, and then we have to hike up like 500 more steps to our cabin for the evening and I'm like are you are you kidding me <laughs> so so we get up there and, and we're like <sighs> no oxygen find our rooms it's freezing all of our heart rates were like I don't know like 80s 90s 100 I think someone said their heart rate was like 120 and I don't know that's that's not good <laughs> At this camp, we just got uh, settled into our rooms, and now we are having a beer and some Roxy, which is a local homemade liquor. You can take it warm or cold. It tastes, uh, it's, I would say it's similar to sake. I'm sure that's probably an offensive comparison um, or an inaccurate comparison. It's silly American, that's how I would describe it. Um, having a Gorka Strong. With Holly Beer, I think. They told me it was. Yeah. Uh, it's cold. It's, it's very cold up here. Um, so we are bundled up. I think I'm gonna run and get my sleeping bag because 
It's nasty. Now I was like, ah, I finally experienced the zero degrees. If I, as a Filipino, we're all excited about cold and snow on the winter winter season. Because we all think, well, once we see a snow, we, what we think is Christmas. But this one is not Christmas. This is a torture cold. I have like probably four layers of clothes and I'm still freezing. Me and Suzanne, we're like talking like, oh, I'm so cold, I'm so cold. And we have no fireplace, no heater, no fireplace. I just need some break from coldness. And I started picking out, checking my nails. Oh, it's turning purple, I'm gonna have a frostbite. And I was like starting, I'm starting like, I don't know, freaking out. I was freaking out because I never, in the Philippines, it's always summer, 365 days, summer the whole time. And I started research about all these people getting frostbite. Maybe I should stop watching TikToks about those things. <laughs> and then when I see my nails turning purple, I'm starting like, oh, I don't want my fingers to be cut when I get home. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Like, we couldn't see anything. It was so cold. <laughs> and I live in Utah. <laughs> but it was so cold. Like, I felt the, the, the freezing come over my body, like going through my body. Um, and then... Everyone's frantically rushing. The clouds just cleared and we can see the mountains finally. Oh, let's go. Susanna, what do you think? And it's literally already gone. <laughs> it's gone. It was, uh, we could see the mountain for like 13 seconds. <laughs> then the clouds came back. <sighs> it's okay. We've, uh, we've got more time. That morning, I had been sleeping and it was dark out and I kind of thought an animal had gotten into our room and it turned out that a dog had snuck in in the middle of the night and was cuddling with me. So it was like, oh, this is like the cutest, snuggliest thing ever. The next morning at like four, I start hearing people stirring and then people just start yelling, you've got to see the stars, you've got to see the mountains. Everyone like runs out bundled up. It's like literally freezing. And I like walk out my door and it's just like the mountains all around you, looking so spectacular. It's so quiet. We're on top of the, on top of the world. And everyone's just, <sighs> and we look up, the sky is clear. It's like this amazing, like midnight blue. You can see the outline of these gorgeous, gorgeous snow covered mountains. And I mean, oh, I, like, it's hot right now and I'm getting goosebumps. Like what's going on? Um, just glowing in the middle of the night. That was so incredible. To see the moon, the sliver moon, and those snow-capped mountains and the, the star, it was just incredible. We wake up in the sky, like all the stars, and then as the light came in, all the mountains, and seeing the sun like reflecting, pictures, they don't do justice. You need to see with your own eyes. Good morning. We are just waking up at Annapurna Base Camp and we were greeted with this. We're getting ready to walk up a little bit further so that we can get a, a better view, but it's literally all sides everywhere we look. Mountain, mountain, another mountain, mountain, more mountains. It's insane. And the fact that it was, you were surrounded by it, it, it felt like, you know, like what it must have felt like for the astronauts to be on the moon, really. That's what I, I was thinking of Neil Armstrong, to be honest with you. I've seen mountains. I've seen mountains in lots of different places, and the Himalayas are just something different.
starts pulling the flute. <laughs> like, he went back to flute. Just threw it in there. It's fine. So maybe you can see the glacier right up there. Um, it's gorgeous, but as seems to be the glacier trend every time I'm on a glacier or near a glacier, it is retreating at an alarming rate. What was the hardest day for you? What was the very hardest moment? Coming back. All the stairs. Want to watch another video? Click here. Want to learn more about my upcoming trips? Click here. Want to subscribe and like all my videos and turn those bell notifications on?